Hello and welcome to tutorial in CS4010. In this tutorial, we are going to study the convergence of uh, predictions. So as you already know, uh, there are two common purposes of the numerical simulation. The first one is to understand the current state and the second one is to predict a state of matter in the future. Now we go for a very simple example you have from your high school, uh, maybe year six. Um, so you have a car that's moving forward at about 60 km per hour and it can stop in five seconds. You need to estimate what is the travel distance of the car. Will it cross over the stop line or not? So to do that, you can do you can solve a uh, quadratic equations and get the exact solutions. But I assume that the computer couldn't solve the quadratic com co uh, equations, and therefore it has to do some predictions, like it predict the future positions based on the current positions and the velocity at the current uh, time. And the future velocity will be computed based by the current velocity and the accelerations. We know that the car stops in 5 seconds, so therefore we know that the average uh, deacceleration is about 12 km per hour. Now, we try to predict this one with MATLAB. Okay, so this is the first module, so a simple predictions with the first derivative. So in this one, we need to plot a graph of uh, distance over the time. So therefore, I need to declare the time range. Uh, my time range will be from 0 second to 5 second. And uh, for example, for exact solution, I can put the time step will be 0 0, 0, 0, 0.001 that every millisecond. And my exact solutions, if I solve uh, the quadratic equations, I will have this one should be 60 over 3.6. We have to convert from kilometer per hour to meter per second times by the time and minus half of 80 square where my A is uh, 12 km per hour and time by T square. Uh, because uh, you have to do it with every single element, so you need a dot here. And this is my exact solution. And I just plot it. So here is uh, the travel distance of my car over 5 seconds. I assume that computer couldn't uh, solve the quadratic equations and I try to use the predictions in the linear algebra. So I need to hold on because I go into keep drawing on this graph and I set my time step for prediction equal to 1. For example, you know, if the time step is bigger, it will do less computations. And my t will be the range from 0 to 5, with the step will be my step that I just defined before. So this will be my time range. And this is my time step. I have my velocity. It can be calculated directly from the time based on the d accelerations so it should be 60 over 3.6 minus the d acceleration should be 12 over 3.6 time by t so this is my exact velocity from the acceleration and now I have to calculate the future positions based on the current positions. So what is my first position? My first position is S0. Uh, because the array in MATLAB start from 1, so we don't have 0. So it start, my initial one should start from 1. And 
at the zero time equal to zero, I have my position is zero. So at t equal to zero, I have the respective s equal to zero. So this is my initial position. Now I have to loop over all step. I can create the next step, and then from next step I can can create the step after it. So I need to loop over everything. So for j equal to two to length of t. So this way I'm going to loop over all step in the time range. Uh, I have to calculate the next one. So j equal to is based on the current position, right? So it should be s two j minus one plus the velocity time by uh, the time. So it should be v of j minus one time by the step. So I compute new location. And then when I have the S2J, I can use this one, submit into here to calculate the S2J plus one. That means I keep loop over all the step in the time stream and I just plot my T and S2. Now let's see, are they the same? Are they coincident or not? So you can see here is my exact solution in blue and the predictions in red uh, has the same shape but um, there is a gap between the prediction and the real value the exact solution the main reason is because I have a very big time step if I choose this two smaller one let's see I have 0 0.1 so you see now my prediction is very close to the exact solution if I have the high uh, ability of computations I can set the time step to 0 0.01 so you see now I have it very close I can consider it coincident to the exact solution yep so in general in numerical simulations the smaller time step give you a better predictions however if you have two tiny time step uh, you will increase the computation load the simulation may run for a few months that's the normal in uh, a PhD level. Okay, now let's go to the next step. Now I want to show you about the situation when you have a big time step. What it can be? Will it have the same shape or it has different predictions? It will go chaos. So now it's going to be a simple example of conversion. In this example, we are going to use uh, Darnquist uh, functions with e, this function. It has the initial value f at 0 equal to 1 and we know the derivatives is a function of the current positions. So it's not a constant like it used to be before. Now it's a function of the current value. Based on some simple operations I can solve uh, for the future value uh, based on the current value and I use this one for my predictions but first of all I will plot out the exact solution so for an example I give my alpha equal to minus 10 that is just a, you can set any other uh, alpha value uh, so I just set my parameter yep now I try to plot a graph value of y uh, over a range of x. So I set my x range equal to from 0 to 2 and I set my step for my exact solution is 0 0.1. So this is my x range. I have to put a semicolon over here. If you don't put the semicolon at the end of the command, so this one will be displayed uh, in the command window. Okay, so I have my f equal to 
zeros of length of x and 1 so it will be a column with the same respective value to x so this will be my y range yep and my exact solutions will be f of equal to the exponential of alpha times by x j so this is my exact solution when I try to solve the differential equation let's see what it is I have to plot it too And because I don't want to plot on the same finger, so I need to create a new finger. Yep. So it will be my uh, graph of my exact solutions, and it go from zero to two. Now I try to use uh, the prediction method to try to predict it. I need to set a range of dx, so I can work with different dx later uh, to study the impact of the step on the solutions. So I have this here 0 0.8, 0 0.17, 0 0.2, 0 0.21. Yeah, I will explain to you this one later when you see it's on the graph. So this will be the series of step. And now I try to study with different time step. So I the first loop I try to loop over the different time step I equal to one to the length of dx. So this way with i equal to one I work with dx equal to zero point zero eight i equal to two I work with the step is zero point seventeen i equal to three the step could be zero point two something like that. Now I declare my x range like I did before and this one. So I just declare my x range. So I have x equal to 0 to 2 and the step will be the x i. So it will be my x range. And now I try to predict the value of the functions. So I need to zero it first, otherwise the old value will have influence on my new value. So I have f equal to zeros of length of x and 1. So it will be in column format. So this will be declare the function again. And now I have the initial value of the function is always 1 because it's a Nyquist function. You can see it over here. So the first value of the function is always 1. So this is my initial value. And I loop over all of the steps like I did before with this one now I do a for loop for j equal to 2 to length of x so I loop on over step and now I calculate the functions based on the equation I just got over here. So my fx equal to uh, fx as a current position, current time or current step times by alpha dx plus 1. So my f at j equal to f at j minus 1 times by alpha time by the time step should be dx at i and plus 1 
So in here, I try to compute the next position or next value. And after all, I can just plot it. So I plot x and Yep. Now we see if my predictions is close to the value or not. So therefore, I need to pick a whole node over here. Yep. So that's not it. Now you can see I have several lines over here. So this one is my exact solutions. This one is a prediction when I have the dx equal to 0 0.8. It has the same shape with the exact solutions, but there is a big gap between the prediction and the exact solution. When I have the dx equal to 17, so now you see that is the orange line. So it has a convergence. It comes to an end, but the problem is it goes over the equilibrium to the other side and then come back and come back. So this is, we can still consider it has a convergence, but it doesn't have the same shape like the exact solution anymore. And when you have the dx equal to 0 0.2, look at the purple line. So it just fluctuates from one side to other side and it has no convergence. It will keep continuing like this until uh, the end of your time range. And now about something really bad. If you look at the green line, so you have not convergence at all. The value fluctuate and exaggerated over the time and it become bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't come to a steady state like it should be. The result make none sense. This is an example of how important your time step should be. Now I just try to add up one more to see if I can reach the uh, exact solutions. If I reach this one, I put one more over here, should be 0 0.01. Yep. So now you can see my new add value will be very close to the exact solution. Like I told you before, if it's really small, it will be a burden for the computations. So in general, the conditions for the conversions is that the delta x must be smaller than 2 over minus alpha. And to have a close example, I recommend you to get the the step should be about 10 times smaller than this recommended value. So it will have a good exact predictions. I hope uh, today example uh, give you some idea about conversion. And thank you for your attention. See you next tutorial.